Repentance is the mercy of God. So this is what we have to first realize. There is a standard that God has. The Bible says God is light in him is no darkness at all. God is holy. The angels in heaven, they cry, holy, holy, holy. And they're not singing a song. They're responding to his character, to who he is. We are called to holiness. We see all throughout the Old Testament, the Lord would say to Israel, be ye holy for I am holy. Hebrews 12, 14, follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. So holiness is a requirement to see the Lord. But the problem was we have all sinned and fallen short of God's standard. So that's why Christ came to be the perfect one and his blood washes our sin away. Now we have the opportunity to repent and believe the gospel. And here's the thing. Repentance is not a suggestion. It is a command for your own good, right? Jesus, when he was preaching in his earthly ministry, here's what he said, Matthew 4, 17. From that time on, Jesus began to preach and say, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent for, that means because, repent because the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Luke 13, 3, Jesus said, I tell you no, but unless you repent, you shall all likewise perish. So repentance is absolutely a requirement. We repent and put our faith in Christ, but it's not only that, it's an ongoing repentance. We're always going to fall short, right? Though I'm covered by the blood of Christ, though I'm counted, I'm justified as righteous now with Jesus, I still fall short at times. I still act in my flesh sometimes, but I always get told and convicted to repent, and I change my mind on that thing. So I want to go back to the topic that the definition of repentance means to change your mind. It means to change your mind. So in order to change your mind, you have to know something is wrong. So when the Holy Spirit convicts you or when the Bible says this is wrong, now I have a different perspective and I can change my mind. And we can change our mind, not only when we have a knowledge of it, but an understanding of it. Romans 12, 2 says, do not be conformed to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Stay in the word. Because that helps you change your mind. That helps you renew your mind. And that's how ultimately we are transformed. So what brought this video about is this summer I was reading the book of Isaiah. Okay, so the book of Isaiah, Isaiah is prophesying about God's judgment and correction that's going to come upon Israel and Judah because they have ultimately forsaken the covenant of God. And ultimately we see God, he shows, he tells you just how wicked their deeds were. But at the end of many passages, he would say, but my hand is stretched still. And I'll show you Isaiah 9, 17. It says, therefore, the Lord shall have no joy in their young men. Neither shall have mercy on their fatherless and widows. For everyone is a hypocrite and an evildoer and every mouth speaks folly. For all this, his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. And I think that verse right there, the very end, his hand is stretched out still is a perfect example of what it means of when God offers us the gift of repentance. And I feel like if we study and meditate on this, that we don't even deserve the opportunity to repent. We've all fallen short many times. The wages of sin is death. You read Romans 1, it says, those who do these things deserve to die. We're not worthy of anything. Now, here's some misconceptions of what I thought repentance was at one point that I want to clarify. Remorse alone, me feeling bad or sorry for my sin or what I did is not repentance. If there is no change of mind, if there is no change of heart, no turning, no forsaking, that's not repentance. That's just sorrow. And the Bible in 2 Corinthians talks about that. There's a fleshly sorrow and a godly sorrow. Here's what it says, 2 Corinthians 7, 9 through 10. Now I rejoice, not that you were made sorry, but that your sorrow led to repentance. That's the goal. For you were made sorry in a godly manner that you might suffer loss from us in nothing. For godly sorrow produces repentance leading to salvation, not to be regretted, but the sorrow of the world produces death. And I want to give you guys an example of when I truly repented. I'm going to give you the example of cussing, right? So one time I saw a friend. This is when I first really followed Jesus. I saw a friend that I haven't seen in a long time. And I saw this friend out of nowhere, my flesh rose up and I blurted out a cuss word. And for the first time, I felt mad conviction, bro. I felt so bad. And since that day, that conviction, that sorrow that I felt, it ultimately led me, dang, I have no business doing that. I just offended the Lord. No. So that led me to repentance and I changed my mind. And ultimately, I had a knowledge of it. But when I read in the scriptures, right, you look at the book of James, how can fresh water and salt water come out of the same well? 
Now I have an understanding and it helped me to change my mind on cussing. And since that day, I've repented and it's done. My next point is that repentance ultimately brings forgiveness. Without repentance, there is no forgiveness, right? Acts 3.19, they said, repent ye therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out so that your sins may be blotted out. When the times of refreshing comes from the presence of the Lord. Jeremiah 36, 3, it may be that the house of Judah will hear all the adversities which I purpose to bring upon them, that everyone may turn from his evil way, that I may forgive their iniquity and their sin. So when we repent, God is faithful to forgive us. 1 John 1, 19 says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And the word of God is truth. The Bible says, God is not a man that he shall lie, nor the son of man that he shall repent. He will forgive you. You just got to turn. And if you haven't put your faith in Christ, just believe, repent and believe. The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord and that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. 